second. India have won the test match. India have won the series. They're going to get back for two. India are home. Lords goes wild. Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the 81 All Out podcast. I'm Siddhartha Vaidyanathan at Sidvi on Twitter and I'm happy to be joined by uh, uh, two 81 All Out regulars, uh, Subhash Jairaman at The Cricket Couch on Twitter. Hi Subhash. What's up Sid? Hi and I'm also joined by uh, Ashoka at AB Van on Twitter, an 81 All Out uh, gang member. Hi Ashoka. Hey man. Hey, so we are here to discuss... Uh, Australia's fourth loss in a World Cup for 20 years. Uh, I think that is uh, quite a, a feat in itself for a team to go so long and be uh, undefeated so rarely. Uh, today was India against Australia at the Oval and uh, India won by 36 runs. Quite a comprehensive uh, victory even though the margin was 36. A lot of the runs came when um, uh, the game was... Uh, well out of reach for Australia and uh, clinical performance throughout. So let's get uh, Subhash into it. Subhash, what did you think? And uh, was one of the more uh, comprehensive victories for India against Australia in uh, World Cups, right? Considering history too. I guess the numbers uh, bear that out. Uh, but what was interesting was, um, you know, we saw India play New Zealand at uh, the Oval during the warm-up game and uh, there was movement. And uh, the Indian top order was a rock by Trent Bolt. And we played this game here. There was no lateral movement in the air, off the pitch. Um, there was no uh, turn for the uh, spinners. So pretty much it was a bat v bat game. Uh, and uh, both teams approached in a very similar fashion, you know. Um, do not let the opposition end by give, gifting them away wickets in the first 10 overs. Uh, slowly build up the momentum and stuff. The only difference, after, in hindsight anyway, is that uh, David Warner's innings, uh, whereas Rohit Sharma and uh, Davan picked up the pace, Warner just potted around for a long time, except for a couple of good aggressive overs. Uh, I think in the final equation, he had 48 dot balls. You know, India on the back end, you could say Alex Carey's runs came uh, after pretty much it was a foregone conclusion, but... India also scored more, the majority of the runs in the last uh, 10 overs, right? They, they scored 116 or so, something like that in the last 10. Um, and Australia, if you look at it, like Maxwell and Carey, Alex Carey, they gave pretty much the same amount of runs and similar number of balls as uh, Hardik Pandya, Dhoni and KL Rahul combined. So Australia got the production from the lower down the order. And they got the production from the middle of the order from Steve Smith, Khwaja uh, and all. But David Warner playing a very un David Warner like innings, um, even though he was kind of slow, even against Afghanistan, he wasn't this slow. Um, I think he had the slowest 50 of his career uh, in this match. Um, I think that was the uh, uh, major uh, difference between the two teams. You could say David Warner was slightly out of touch, or you could say that uh, the Indian pace bowlers bowled really well, which I will tend to agree with that. Bumrah and Bhuneshwar were uh, pretty good and did not let um, either of those bowlers, ba- sorry, uh, David wanted to get off easily. So I think that's the f- basic difference in the final equation. Otherwise, I thought it was a pretty even Stephen game and I don't think Australia should be too sad with the result. And I, I expect Australia to be in the final four. Yeah, so Ashoka, were you surprised at all by the uh, decision of the toss for, I mean, India uh, going in, uh, deciding to bat first. I mean, they've been a good chasing team and the Oval has also been a good ground for chasing uh, in recent yeah, that, times. That, that has been the problem with India, right? Like in a, in a pitch like this, when Subhash says this is a bat v bat pitch, which, is, which it is. So that has been the only uh, chink in the armour for the Indian juggernaut. Like that, uh, when, we are set, when we are sent to bat or when we choose to bat in a, in a flat pitch, we tend to get around uh, 300 or 310 after being like 180 for one in the 30th over. But I think today we kind of, uh, there was a good course correction for that problem. So I was not surprised that we chose to bat first, but I was surprised that the way that uh, the the lower order kind of uh, picked it up. I I thought Kohli was slow for a while. uh, Kohli could have gone up the pace. I mean, I'm just nitpicking, but 
otherwise there was nothing much to complain man uh, we had a very good batting performance as far as the batting went i was actually uh, pleased that with uh, all the talk before the world cup being about uh, you know number 4 who is going to bat what is this and all that i was happy that uh, india decided to change it around a bit and played according to the conditions i mean uh, pandya coming in was uh, great at that time he doesn't need any time to get set as such he can come in and hit start hitting from the first ball and i thought that uh, uh, injection of momentum was really good and uh, something that uh, kl rahul might well have done who knows i mean he came in at the end and scored 11 of 3 balls so uh, maybe he would have two but i i think uh, they played the uh, card well by going in with pandya right with this indian lineup and the record says that uh, the top three score what 52 53% of all the runs uh, in the last 4 uh, years um the key has always been that you know you have to take early wickets with them otherwise the template is well set you know sure today was hardik pandya coming in and it could have been need need not have been hardik pandya today because he could have gotten out first ball edged and carry catches it on another in you know, another day another planet um but um you know uh, they since stark um and cummins could not take a wicket the conditions didn't help and uh, the patience of the indian openers also didn't help um the fact that they batted first and could not take a wicket for a, quite a while that meant um basically you know uh, you're going to be running out of options no matter what because it doesn't matter who it is you know whether it is zampa or stoinis or whoever if batsmen of this caliber know they can take risks no matter how good a ball you bowl pretty much you're going to hit it Hardik Pandya has shown to be be able to hit you know medium paces as well as um spinners equally well. Yeah, I was uh, really impressed with how uh, all the Indian batsmen um uh, you know didn't really need to premeditate or improvise. There was a lot of uh, hitting in the straight zones in the V. Uh, there was one uh, Shikhar Dhawan four that he hit of Mitchell Stark. It was quite uh, just a turning shot the umpire had to like immediately take a wave of action and uh, the ball just zoomed through and similarly kohli sixes and uh, the uh, pandya too i mean there was it was not like uh, you know the way we saw the australian batsman khwaja moving across and trying to improvise with uh, bumra or uh, even carry towards the end there was was solid percentage play and uh, i think one of the reasons why this team is also able to do this of course they have extremely good batsmen highly skilled but the other reason is that they don't have to uh over reach for the total right they know that they have a bowling lineup that's strong enough to defend a score even if by chance if they fall a bit short they have that confidence in the bowling lineup so i think that's one reason why they're able to play so naturally without needing to really uh try and over accelerate I mean I think I think in for in games uh, where India bats first and scores more than 300 and in games where India bowls first with Bhuvneshwar um Bumrah and the spinners uh, the rec- records are like very very different um even though you play with the same four bowlers if ba- India does not put uh, today they got the oomph from the middle order to get past 350 if they had put 325 on the board they would have lost the game um even with david bonner's slow innings they would have lost the game today um but uh you know the fact that this is also being played in the world cup um uh, in not so small ground like uh, indian grounds um kind of adds additional uh, potency to the indian bowling lineup even when they are uh, defending a total and the fact that it was a very high total today also helped the cause otherwise it's even stevens you know uh, the bowling lineup is good especially when they get to bowl first uh, but uh, the fact that they had a very tall score uh, helped them today in terms of uh, selection uh, i mean for the they went unchanged for this game but uh, do you see someone like uh, jadeja coming in for maybe uh, kedar jadhav or do you see them sticking to this and uh, keeping jadhav there because uh, you never know in case as a top order uh wobble at some point uh, i don't think there should be they shouldn't fuss much about it because uh, they are getting the benefits of jadeja anyways by conveniently injuring some player <laughs> and, <laughs> and I, I, some player does get injured and we do see jadeja throwing in from the deep at some point in the game but 
So they are getting the benefits of Jadeja anyways. Because, because I think he's he's the best Indian fielder in the last 20 years that I have seen uh, play cricket. So that is his best aspect. So they are getting some value out of him anyways. But but uh, as far as batting and bowling goes, bowling, sure, he's a, he's a fantastic bowler. But batting, as far as batting goes, even Stevens between Jadav and uh, Jadeja any day. Unless we go further in the tournament, uh, you know, and the Indian management decides to give somebody a rest, I don't see uh, Indian eleven changing. Unless you know, obviously everybody considering everybody is fit in the squad, I don't see them changing eleven unless India is so far ahead of the uh, rest of the group that they're willing to give somebody a rest. I don't see them changing it. Um, you know, Bhuvneshwar Kumar was very impressive today uh, with the ball. Um, especially when he came back in the second and third spells. Um, and that was like classic Bhuvneshwar Kumar of last year's IPL, nailing everything, slowers. Um, so that was fantastic. And, uh, you know, there was an argument to make for Shami. Hey, you know, on a wicket that gives very little away, you need more pace and a guy who hits the seam. So any little life that might be there could be extracted. So there was an argument for Shami to play this game, but I think... Bhuvneshwar's performance kind of shuts down that talk. Yeah, so in terms of the Australian chase, uh, it uh, did seem a bit curious with uh, how they were pacing it, especially uh, Warner and uh, Smith. There was a phase in which uh, the run rate was go- uh, asking rate was uh, going higher and higher and uh, even two batsmen who have all the shots, they were uh, a combination, I guess, of good bowling, keeping them down, as well as them not really wanting to uh, go all the way and uh, one of the uh, on Twitter there were a couple of people talking about that uh, Mohali chase that came earlier this year when Australia chased down 359 uh, with Ashton Turner playing like a freak of an innings and uh, it was similar there when they were uh, just about keeping themselves in the game but the run rate was going up going up and then he came and played a freak so I was uh, I mean you can't use that as a template for anything but uh, were, were you surprised by the way Australia went about uh, the chase in the first 30 overs 35 overs the 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 only thing only thing that I would uh, complain in the whole innings that the chase was that I would have switched uh, Kwaja and Maxwell. I would have sent Maxwell uh, in the place that they sent Kwaja. But uh, the way that uh, Warner and uh, uh, Smith played if you actually notice that there was a rain threat for some time and at that point in time, they were like 23 overs, 24 overs and 120, 130. So if, if DLS had come into the picture, they would have been still in a good position to whack it out of the ground. Uh, as uh, Subhash was pointing out earlier that uh, Warner innings was kind of uh, a letdown. Uh, other than that, Smith played beautifully, man, today. Smith and even Kwaja to his credit uh, he did play uh, well, 42 of 39, if I remember right. So yeah. he did, play, yeah, he did play well. The uh, only problem was that Maxwell should have been. He, they could have punted with Maxwell ahead. He even if he had gotten like a, a 30 of 15 balls, 20 balls, he, he would have actually prompted some bowling changes that Indians would not have done it because Kohli and team were like in cruise control from say over 20 to 35. Which is where I think Australia kind of lost the match. They left too much to be done. Like, if I remember, it was 166 required of the last 90. Uh, if it was even 130 or 120, Australia would have been like far more comfortable even uh, with the loss of 2-3 wickets. The overall approach, batting approach by Australia, I think was very good. Very sound. Considering, you know, the modern day, no target is really out of reach. Uh, and the fact that they will have confidence uh, knowing that they can pull off a chase of this magnitude because they've recently done it. Um, even though it, the personnel has changed. Um, but the only, as I said, you know, the uh, David Warner innings kind of put them too far behind the eight ball. Uh, they were behind the eight ball to begin with, obviously. So you're chasing seven runs and over. But he put them too far behind. Other than that, uh, and I agree with Ashoka. You know, Maxwell ought to have come in. And even if he scores 30, 35 in, at the 200 strike rate, changes the course of the game. The, uh, because he makes the damage so much earlier 
in the line in the uh, piece that even khwaja can come and run a, run a ball and then somebody else like alex carey plays a blinder and then you know uh, kulton nile or stark somebody gets another uh, 200 run you know 10 out of 5 balls or 10 out of 4 balls inning and then you are almost home but they were too far in the hole so when uh, warner got out i, I was just thinking i mean uh, in the past there have been instances when uh, a team is chasing a big score and uh, there have been quite a few teams in the past that have just sent this one uh, like a pinch hitter right uh, maybe a number 10 or number 9 saying hey just swing and like jagadish so srinath obviously it could be or even shane warne in that qu- quarter final against uh, new zealand in 96 or there a uh, few other cases and but teams just don't do that anymore it's they don't uh, ha- want that uh, momentum boost they just feel that maybe their main batsman can give it anyway it's but is it uh, something that you've noticed too or am, am i missing something i think the uh, pinch hitters i think there was a recently a piece written by uh, scott oliver about the floating pinch hitters i haven't read the piece yet it was an it's on cricket buzz uh, it came out today during the match um he is about talks about uh, floating hitters like the how hardik pandya was moved up you know maxwell i think the true pinch hitters where you take a 9 10 11 or somebody like that you know your fast bowler kata and sutrambar uh, that guy coming up and playing at 3 and 4 i think we have seen the end of it uh, it's just not fair um, you know and uh these days bouncers are well you know everybody has good bowlers at high pace it's not fair to somebody that's not used to uh, playing really quality pacers and asking them to come and throw the bat around it's not fair uh but instead of the real pinch hitters we have these guys that are capable of playing these cameos uh, slightly lower down the order at 6 uh, 7 8 they are getting pushed up um like butler can you know butler comes in at 6 and 7 can come in easily play at 4 and three easily same thing with pandya same thing with uh, uh, maxwell so that if you still want to call them pinch hitters but these are you know actually accomplished batsmen slash hitters uh, but yeah there is some movement towards that uh, but not uh, your typical jagal srinath coming in or kapil dev being sent up yeah and i think uh, now as you mentioned before in, uh, teams know that uh, no target is safe so even if they have to get uh, 12 and over 13 and over in the last uh, 10 we, they back them mentally they back themselves so they don't really feel like ne- uh, having that middle over momentum mm-hmm. when you can get when you know that you can anyway get that uh, push if you have wickets in hand i guess so and, and secondly and secondly that uh, even usman khwaja we are being very unfair just because it's today's match contest uh, context have been unfair to usman khwaja in this podcast today at all yeah but no uh, the point is like uh, we are suggesting that maxwell should have come ahead of usman khwaja but usman khwaja is a guy who has done extremely well in the bbl like he has won matches for his team uh, in the semi final and the finals and at strike rates of around 130 140 so it is the, the age of sending the likes of jawagal srinath or or shane won has well and truly passed because the batsmen themselves in prime like like say the poorest batsman in ipl that uh, the well accomplished batsman which i would say is uh, uh, ajinkya rahare in my opinion who has a strike rate still has a strike rate of 120 mm-hmm. right and and he maintains an average of 30 which is still a fantastic thing and since this is the same batsman he can draw in from the same learnings and he can do that as well like 120 is like 7 or 8 and over uh, yeah. 7 and over yeah so 133 is 8 and over so he, the batsman can go at 7 and 8 and over it is only when uh, run rate shoot up to 10 or 11 that's when uh, that's what happened today like there were like 16 overs to go and the run rate was already somewhere in 9, 9. or 10 yeah 10 11 so that's when we were thinking like okay maxwell should have come up so we are looking for like extraordinary talents to save the day uh, rather than say a pinch hitter and uh, and a prayer correct yeah so one of the other things i wanted to talk about was uh, the in india i thought were terrific on the field i mean uh, some jade, that jadeja catch that run out to get uh, finch and overall i mean you know some l- nice stops and uh, was very impressed with the energy there did you guys feel the same way 
I mean, uh, India has been a pretty solid, safe catching team for a while. And they have been a pretty solid uh, outfielding team as well for a while in limited overs. So I don't think it should be something that comes as a shock or a surprise to us anymore. You know, it's, these are pretty, okay, you, you can have, um, you know, Kuldeep Yadav is slightly slower on the turf, across the turf. Um, but other than that, you know, you have uh, pretty solid fielders. Um, you know, not everybody is great. You know, like there are very, only very few Maxwells and uh, Jadejas around. But these guys are like 80% Maxwell or 70% Maxwell. Um, and that is, you know, sure, Jadeja came in as a substitute for Davan, but Davan is a very good outfielder. Pretty safe catcher too in the outfield. So, you know, uh, I'm, you expect two top teams to go against each other and, uh, you know, bat, bowl and field uh, really well. And so in that sense, I was not surprised. It was, was to be expected. Oh, no, no, I was not surprised, but I think you're right. I think if India have a poor day on the field, then that should come as a surprise rather than, yeah. I mean, the good days should be seen as a norm now. Also, uh, they, India were the home team today. <laughs> the all, ni- 99% of the crowd was uh, backing them and they, there was a sea of blue. And this is something that we've seen in uh, World Cups uh, recently. I mean, even the last World Cup in Australia, there was uh, Indian support everywhere. And I'm sure in England, with uh, both the expat community as well as traveling uh, fans, you'll see a lot of that uh, going on, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, during 2015 World Cup, the South Africa match, it was like 99.9% was uh, Indian fandom. And uh, some random South African fans were there. And similar was the case today at the Oval. Uh, plus, South London is like major Daisy Adda. Well, England is a Daisy Adda. Um, so, that was to be expected. Uh, but it was, uh, you know, so you're not that... These days, anywhere India plays, uh, maybe not so much in the Caribbean, uh, anywhere else, you find uh, Indian fans showing up in very large numbers. Um, however, it was disappointing that, you know, for example, um, Maxwell comes in in the 37th over and he has this world, uh, one of the greatest fast bowlers in the game right now, bowling to him and against impossible odds, you know, very steep, uh, increasing run rate. And first ball, he casually drives him on, on the onside for a four. And then he hits like three fourths of his first four balls he faces. Um, and uh, the crowd is like quiet. Nobody seems to acknowledge that the guy is doing something fantastic. I mean, first of all, you have a fantastic player. And then he's actually doing fantastic things against the odds. Um, and uh, that sort of thing really pisses me off. Uh, sure, you know, you're an India fan. You go to watch India and you want India to win at all. But where is the grace that you acknowledge um, the effort, and also in this case, not just the effort, the uh, fan, you know genius level batting that Maxwell pulls off. Where is the acknowledgement of that? You know that sort of lack of grace is very annoying. Um, it's terrible, terrible for the sport. Sure, India can India fans can bring in the money, but being so partisan, hyper partisan, that you cannot acknowledge good things when they happen. That is terrible, terrible for the sport. I guess I've become so ins- insensitive to this issue uh, that, uh, of course, I should uh, feel uh, about it as well. But ever since, I think, 20 years, as far as I can remember, or even longer than that, I, I have uh, very rarely seen uh, fans of one team, uh, especially, you know, I, I can talk only from an Indian perspective, that Indian fans applaud the opposition team, even in India. I mean, of course, in the IPL, it happens because uh, you have Kohli and Dhoni and all who are uh, b- big superstars. And if, if they're playing against the home team, the home fans will still uh, applaud them. But when an opposition country team comes to India, I've very, very, very rarely, I mean, maybe with the exception of Chennai or a few other grounds, very, very rarely seen uh, such applause. Uh, Ashoka, hey. similar? Uh- uh, I have two things to say. One is BMKJ, which is Bharat Mata Ki Jai. Mm. And the second thing is, where were you fans, where were the uh, Canadian fans when Vijay Bharatwaj scored like man of the series in Toronto? If you think these are all unrelated hey, stuff... That's Nairobi, the Nairobi, Nairobi. <laughs> Nairobi, yeah. Sorry, okay, fine. Nairobi. Take it, Nairobi. Where were the Nairobi locals who were cheering for Vijay Bharatwaj? Mm. See, such unrelated bullshit is what is being passed off for uh, arguments these days. So, I have, I essentially support uh, 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 
couch is argument but that's the state of things these that passes off for cricket fandom these days like are chal yaar chutiya kitna mara kohli 82 nahi hai wahi match hai dhawan gabbar ne kitna mara 100 oh nahi match hai maxwell ye to chutiya hai kya karega kuch bhi nahi karega that that is the actually it, it looks very disparaging and it looks very disrespectful towards how we view cricket as a game and and i think that has become a minority these days like people who watch matches for the contest between bat and ball is very is is become minor and those are look viewed as kill joys as well like people who are like hey always preachy and stuff but i would strongly be on the side of uh, cricket coach in in this matter at least because i think that viewing cricket as a game between bat and ball dispassionately is far more enjoyable is what my thing is no, no i agree all, right and it, it is i think i think bullshit words like passion like uh, like pride and all that is being thrown at something that needs to be simply viewed as a contest between bat and ball and that is such a beautiful thing to experience people are uh, i mean if more people give it a chance i think that would be a fantastic thing to experience uh, rather than just being like close minded and saying hey india should win of course india should win i mean all all power to you but view the opposition player like smith played a silky innings today 16 of 69 16 of 70 balls hardly any risk he did what warner wanted to do in the beginning of the innings but correct zero mistakes till that he got LD, lbw that's a beautiful thing to watch i mean if you miss that detail i mean what are you doing with 7 hours of your hotstar subscription or wherever you're watching cricket with? i mean, I mean what, what are you doing uh, the the two of you did the podcast with uh, daniel norcross and kathi adate about uh, what you what are you watching when you're watching cricket right um and i think a lot of the uh, my hard work here was uh, reflected in that podcast too um uh, i don't really care you know okay sure you want to watch the contest between bat and ball but you know different all of us learn cricket in a different way we watch cricket in a different way we watch it for different reasons and all that sure you know you want to watch india win you want india to win all that stuff great but you know they are playing against a top level team too you know it's not like india is going to score 352 and bowl australia out for 10 um and you know they also have world class players and they're going to score and you have to acknowledge that you have to do that because it's only a game at the end of the day it's not life or death it's only a game and you have to have that grace to see the goodness in people otherwise no matter what you know you could be a great country like uh, the rising asian giant all that bullshit but if majority of people have this very small mentality uh, myopic uh, view of things in the grand scheme of things it's useless well the interesting addendum to that of course is that uh, one of the sites of uh, the day uh, that was uh, that went viral on uh, social media was uh, how some of the indian fans on the boundary were booing uh, steve smith and uh, how uh, virat kohli basically gestured to them and said that hey you have to be clapping him and then there was another clip later of uh, smith and kohli sort of smith going up to kohli and uh, sort of shaking his hand or patting his patting him kind of stuff so bro hug uh, bro hug yeah. so so this is an interesting uh, dynamic right where you have Uh, uh, fans who are partisan on one end but uh, a player uh, the biggest player in the uh, indian team who is actually urging them to cool off on the partisan the paradox here is this that uh, virat kohli is the manifestation of the new aggr- new and aggressive india you know the economically uh, upcoming india or already supercharged india and massive population and fan base that uh, dictates the what uh, needs to be done in the world of cricket at least uh he's the guy that you know in the world in the time of t20 and stuff any press conference about test cricket he says you know india should support test cricket if india can support test cricket test we don't have to worry about the future of test cricket around the world and he's the same guy when his supporters or his team supporters um are being hyper partisan has the grace uh, to say that you know this is smith steven smith is one of the all time greats um that you know he should be applauded rather than you know getting booed for a freaking nonsense so like that is the dichotomy here that uh, indian fans are going one path and 
the guy who's apparently internalizes all this is supposed to be going down that path but he actually does a 180 so you know uh, we have to uh, i mean if people thought virat kohli is uh, classless or immature or whatever they need to recalibrate that and understand that he sees the humanity in or or at least uh, the genius in other players it is very easy to paint uh, uh kohli as an mcbc guy because that those are the words i mean uh, the, the words like passionate and uh, wears his heart on the sleeve all this comes very easily to uh, uh like people who portray him in in the press in the media and this is a guy who's in the media all the fucking time so so it is very easy to easily uh, stereotype him into a certain kind of thing but it it is well worth the effort to watch how he plays the game how he approaches the craft of cricket like you know, how he watches uh, uh, the op- opponents how he uh, uh, respects respects the bowlers and and the opposition players so this is also the guy who said that aiden markham is the most exciting talent and i kind of loved why i mean when he said that i kind of uh, uh, loved the aspect of his observational uh, capabilities like of course aiden markham is a supremely talented player so it is no surprise to me that he uh, did this like he went and uh, uh, kind of overtly gave a signal to the crowd that hey uh, this is a great player that is representing a country of course he has paid the price for whatever the things that have happened now he is back on the field why don't we uh, respect the fact and respect his capabilities rather than chumma booing randomly so it doesn't come as a surprise to me at all um, maybe uh, and this is a long time grouse that kauchi uh, uh, will agree that maybe there there has to be slightly more nuance in the way that we paint people in the media i mean uh, rather than uh, writing empty filler words to describe a person maybe a sportsman should be defined by how he approaches the game yeah the two are related right i think uh, the two points about uh, extreme uh, fandom where you just applaud your team player and you don't uh, applaud the other player you don't even recognize the other player doing well the opposition is related to the fact how uh, very often players are just uh, pigeon holed as certain characters like you have the uh, extremely modest uh, cricketer you have the very humble cricketer you have the gritty, gritty cricketer gritty you have the passionate you have you know as you said the heart on your sleeve etc etc but actually speaking just like the game of cricket is so complex and so beautiful to uh, understand and uh, if you pay attention to all aspects of it, it the, the, it's the same with personality right i mean virat kohli uh, on the one hand uh, he went and uh, i mean it it was a joke as he later said but he said he actually made a joke that said uh if you don't uh, like me why do you live in this country and uh, why don't you go and live outside uh which became a massive deal i thought much more a bigger deal than it should have been but okay he said that but at the same time he's saying this and this is the complex nature of his personality it doesn't mean that he is uh one thing or it doesn't mean he's the other thing he can ha- he can have multitudes right and that is something that i think both the media as well as the fans um <laughs> it's high time they portray it in that way but again i don't know if the economics I mean, of uh, the media allow it because the economics dictates that you pigeon hole and then you hype and you put down and things exactly, like that exactly exactly you know uh, he, all the your uh, moka moka shit and uh, you know isbar whatever revenge bullshit um, all the gets hyped up and that's good for you know who are the broadcasters or star sports or whoever and even for cricket for you know to play up um, a character and like you uh, you know pair off all the redeeming qualities of a person and then take this one quality and say like co- you know how many commercials of uh, you know uh, pre series that you have seen of india play in, in which india is playing where kohli is you know holding a bat in his hand and like you know mouth is open and he's like basically yelling how often have you seen it pretty much every single series is the same thing whether he has a bat or doesn't have a bat that's the only difference otherwise it's basically a shot of kohli you know screaming i you know when his team won or somebody taking a catch or a wicket or whatever um that's that's the portrayal of kohli and that's how kohli will be and whereas you know and they'll never show a picture of like that of rahul dravid rahul dravid like they'll they'll be a freaking temple uh, there will be agraharam 
<laughs> inner sanadi and then the rahul dravid will be doing puja or something like that. never show or, uh, or there will be a library where he will be reading books on quantum physics quantum physics while uh, discussing with leo tolstoy about war and peace <laughs> you know like it's it's like media wants something where they don't want their audience to think like this is it this is we have distilled it down to the essential nature of these people even though they are all complex human beings you know dravid is just as unforgiving and uh, Hadoos as anybody that Bombay has ever produced, right? But it will never be associated with Dravid. Um, but media wants to like pare them down to the, the absolute essential, saying like this is what this guy is, and that is considering these businesses are built around the success of these people, they are doing a tremendous injustice and being unfair. Yeah, and and it is very important because uh, our our way of watching cricket on TV or not these days on mobile phones and laptops. is an audio video thing so you can't dissociate uh, audio from video audio also informs a lot about the match so how you call the match informs the viewers on on what the match is like today when subhash was saying that this is an evenly matched game that's not how it was called at all throughout the 100 overs or however however much overs it was bowled so that was not how it was called and that's how it should be called like the only difference was the 15 overs that australia kind of slowed down or when the indian bowlers bowled well and that's a matter of uh, how you see the game but it was a tight game and that's how it should have been called but today we are now saying that yeah uh, we made uh, an above par total and australia always didn't look like it and they lacked uh, intent i think we all agree that uh, there needs to be more nuance and complexity that's coming in but whether it'll come in or not is another issue for another day uh, thank you so uh, much for yes. joining us subhash and uh, ashoka thank you yeah thanks man so that brings us to the end of another episode please subscribe on itunes spotify google podcasts and wherever else you prefer uh, it will be wonderful if you can leave a rating and a review it will help more people find us and uh, that can only be a good thing you can also follow us on twitter at 81 all out and check out our previous previous articles and podcasts at uh, 81 all out.com we'd love to hear from you so please send us feedback and we look forward to uh, doing another podcast sometime soon goodbye in the ashri shot takes it india win they come back for the second india have won the test match india have won the series they're going to get back for two india at home lords goes wild